Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the February 1st, 2016 Selectman's Meeting. First, we have oath of office for three firefighters, Brian Pitts, Brian Alley, and Courtney Augur. Mr. Chair, thank you very much. I'd like to present to you our newest firefighters. And we thank you very much for the indulgence. Uh, tonight, we will be swearing in Ryan Pitts. Yeah. Ryan, come stand up here. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Ryan Pitts of Pelham, New Hampshire in the county of Hillsborough. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of full-time firefighter in said town, and whereas we the subscribers have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you and said you the said Ryan Pitts as full-time firefighter of said town, and upon taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand and seal, this 21st day of December 2015, Fred Welsh, town manager. If you could raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Ryan Pitts. I, Ryan Pitts. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties encumbered on me. All the duties encumbered on me. As full-time firefighter. As full-time firefighter. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Ryan will be pinned on by Deputy Kennedy. I'll try not to stab you too bad. Thank you. Chief. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Appreciate it. We'll take good care of you. Thank you. Welcome aboard, Ryan. Thank you. Good Sir, Brian Alley, Fire. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Brian Alley of Hudson, New Hampshire, in the county of Hillsborough. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of full time firefighter in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, the said Brian Alley, as full time firefighter of said town. And upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this 23rd day of December 2015, Fred Welsh, town manager. You raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Brian Alley, I, Brian Alley, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially, <coughs> discharge and perform, discharge and perform, all the duties encumbered on me, all the duties encumbered on me, as full-time firefighter, as full-time firefighter, according to the best of my abilities, according to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules and regulations, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So this evening we ask Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Alley to pin on. 
Yeah. Sir? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mr. Raleigh's no stranger to public service. He's a retired police officer from Tingsboro, Massachusetts. Ah. So you have practice. <laughs> <laughs> you made whole complaints. <laughs> Courtney Ozier, firefighter. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Courtney Ozier of Ware, New Hampshire in the county of Hillsborough, New Hampshire. Whereas there is a vacancy of the office of full-time firefighter in said town, and whereas we the subscribers have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you the said Courtney Ozier as full-time firefighter of said town and upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment mm -hmm. and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk you shall have the powers perform the duties and be subject to the liabilities of such office uh, until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead given under my hand this first day of February 2016 Fred Welsh town manager could raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, Courtney Osier. I, Courtney Osier. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. <coughs> discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties encumbered on me. All the duties encumbered on me. As a full-time firefighter. As a full-time firefighter. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. So the penny will be by Mr. and Mrs. Osher. Many of you have heard, uh, some working in the fire department know the difference, but there were several dates given on the swearing in. We had two firefighters, um, Brian and Ryan, began their career in December, and Courtney begins tomorrow. So we wish you well in your stop. Uh, that concludes it. Thank you very much for your Thank you for coming tonight.
Moving on to public comment. Anyone wishing public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to the board. Mr. Waddell? Uh, just that... Uh, For announcements and community yes. calendar. Uh, tomorrow night, there's the meeting on the school, the deliberative session. People should uh, attend that. There's also next uh, Tuesday, a primary in town. And I hope everybody is not listening to ads on TV and commercials and that they're doing their own research and voting for the best candidate. Thank you. Mr. Bridal. I'd just like to thank everybody that showed up at the uh, deliberative session on Saturday. The crowd was kind of sparse, but we got the, the, the town's business done, and uh, we're going to move forward. Mrs. Wilsley? That's the understatement of the year. It's really sad because the public has an opportunity to really pitch in and give us some guidance. And the, uh, the lack of public participation was unfortunate, but uh, we, we did it. So thank you for being there. Mr. Bean. Nothing, sir. Next, we have the consent agenda. I we have so tax moved. credits, yeah. um, new veterans, new disabled, two six, 2016 change from vet to spouse, uh, 2016 new trust for existing vet, Hampton Cemetery deed, and parade and public gathering license. A motion to accept the um, consent agenda. Second. May I ask if we can pull item seven, the parade and public gathering <laughs> license for a separate vote? That's the March 6th, uh, uh, I assume, race. I, yes. I just think that should be singled out because I have no intention of voting with, on it and I have a, um, I'm certainly comfortable with the rest of the consent agenda. <clears throat> okay, it doesn't matter. Um, all those in favor, unanimous. And then would someone like to make a motion for the parade and public I'll make a license? motion for that. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, four to one. And I'm opposed. Next, right. we have appointments. First, we have Chief <coughs> Ayotte, Fire Department, Departmental Update. Hello. And Deputy Kennedy. Deputy Kennedy. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank you very much for allowing us to, to come in and join you this evening. <clears throat> Thanks for letting us speak before you. Uh, we're grateful for the indulgence, moreover, for allowing us to present your newest firefighters to you and to the town. We this is an important. It. it gives people an idea of what's going on. Absolutely agree. Yes, absolutely agree. This is an important time in our department. We've had a great deal of change over the last 18 months. Change is not always easy, and uh, nor is it often welcome. Uh, change, and, and I'm happy to report to you that your firefighters and fire officers have been performing ex exceptionally well despite these stressors, and I'm proud of their continued efforts to give their best service possible to their community. This is an important time in the lives of our new firefighters as they start a career in the greatest profession in the world. They'll become members of one of the most respected departments in the state of New Hampshire, and dedicate their lives to a life of service that is its own reward. Their arrival comes on the heels of many promotions in our department and also is the result of some retirements. On Friday, a ceremony was held for firefighter Matthew Clement, who retired after 13 and a half years of service at Hampton Fire Rescue. He was, a very, he was very active in our water rescue program, helping obtain much of the equipment we use to make this service such a success. He's also served as a beacon for the Hampton Fire Color Guard, attending many of the services and ceremonies in full dress or coordinating the team's response when their presence was requested. We will miss him, and we wish him, his wife Kate, and their two beautiful children well in the future. Absolutely. The new firefighters we saw earlier are bringing in a great level of energy to the department. <laughs> Starting tomorrow morning, all groups, including Ryan Hickey, who was brought in in May, all groups will be training a new firefighter. This is exciting and causes every member to train on the basics as well as refresh some of the items that may have gotten rusty. This makes seasoned firefighters even better as they hone their skills learned so long ago. These new firefighters enter the service at a time of unprecedented growth. As I have reported to you previously, we are very busy. Our call volume continues to rise. Hampton Fire Rescue fielded 2,152 calls for service on the fire side and 2,264 calls for service on the emergency <coughs> medical services side. 
total for 2015, 4,416 calls for service. If you recall, I spoke about 2014 being a banner year as it broke all previous records with 4,361 calls for service. We had an additional 55 calls for service in 2015, which is more than our previous record. Based on the growth of the community and the increased draw, both as a place to live and as a place to visit, we believe this trend will continue. In fact, we can look at the month of January as a point of reference. We've answered 175 fire calls this year, and that's up over 165 in 2015. For our EMS numbers, we looked even further, and we see an even greater trend. Looking back over the last four years, we find that January has looked like this. In 2013, 140, 151 runs. In 2014, 176 runs. In 2015, 182 runs. And now in 2016, 201 runs. So in a matter of four years, we've seen a 25% increase in our call volume. Fire and EMS call volume is not the only place we're seeing an increase for call service. In fire prevention, we issued 193 permits in 2015, which is more than the 160 issued in 2014. 91 permits of assembly are included in that number, and that's up over 69 issued in 2014. The Fire Prevention Bureau reviewed 126 plans and performed over 175 fire code inspections and conducted 11 fire investigations in that time. Over 400 fire code inspection reports have been sorted and examined. These reports indicate whether or not a building is compliant with the code and uh, following an inspection by a fire alarm company or a sprinkler company. If they are not, um, subsequent information must be gathered and obtained before updating the records for each address. Perhaps most extraordinary is the volume of children that received fire safety education this year. In total, 458 students were reached in Center School, Sacred Heart, and we were happy to add several homeschooled school children to the list this year. It was excellent. We have four members that are on long-term leave, and we wish them all a speedy recovery and hope to see them again soon. I believe their recovery will be made somewhat easier by a temperate winter as that we're being blessed with this year. However, I would like to ask that if we do have a snowstorm in the near future, that members of the community consider adopting a fire hydrant and keep it clear for three feet in all directions. Also, please remember that you must keep direct vent appliances free from snow, and this includes snow drifts. The appliances must vent to the outdoors to be safe and eliminate the threat of carbon monoxide in your homes. Please remember those elderly and infirm neighbors that might not be able to do this for themselves. There are calls for this service going on right now. I'm happy to report that the beach fire station has now been lettered and we have it signed. Okay. Our new fire engine pumper, Ms. Wolsey, That's is being fabricated. We're receiving weekly reports, uh, progress reports along with pictures to indicate the progress. The cab has now been painted and the pump is built. We anticipate that the engine will be delivered in late April or early May. Thank you very much and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Questions, Mr. Bridal. No, it sounds like you've been real busy and yes, sir. continue to give the town the good quality service that you're known for. Yes, sir. Mrs. Wolseley? Yes. <coughs> um, I, I confess that I haven't been really looking at hydrants closely, but have you talked with Carl McMoran? Are they putting the, fla the, whatever, the flags or whatever they put on the hydrants? So no, uh, the, the fire department tends to do that, especially oh. in anticipation of a storm. Yeah. Um, we actually have had a few go on recently. We haven't had any storms that have been, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I think that the proverbial well. knock would. But uh, we're, we're certainly prepared to make that happen in the future. Okay. And actually, I think that if, if I'm not pushing for it, if we have to notify for snow day or something, maybe we should put a concurrent notice on the internet and on channel 22 asking people to find the nearest hydrant mm -hmm. and shovel it. Um, it was wonderful to see the nice young people sworn in this evening. You are at what for staffing now? Your authorized staffing for firefighters should be 28? Correct. And you are where now? You are at 28? With, the, with uh, Courtney Osher's hiring for tomorrow morning, we are now staffed at 28. <clears throat> Who's retiring tomorrow? Uh, she's starting tomorrow. Oh, she, oh, yes, but I mean, but you mentioned uh, the gentleman who, who's on leave. I have four on leave, right? I have two surgical, one with long-term illness, actually three surgical, and one long-term illness that remain out right now. Okay. So I'm I'm hired up. All my open positions are That's filled. What I'm However, thinking. I'm not staffed at nine um, with with eight you know, uh, with seven firefighters per day because I still have an injury. Well, that's what I'm getting at. So you ha are authorized for 28 positions, but how many bodies have you got right now 
Oh, Able to active. work. Yeah. Twenty-four firefighters, okay. and all of my officers are working. Okay. So right. thirty-six is total there. Because we are really, it's that it scares me. We are short-staffed <clears throat> um, in your department. Not that people don't do a great job, and they do. They but sure I'm do. sorry, that scares me. May I have a copy of your report when you have a few minutes? Just throw it in at the town office. I would Certainly. like to to have a copy of your remarks. Um, I think that's it. And I'm Mr. Bean. Looking forward to the bumper. <laughs> Chief, Deputy, great job. No questions. Thank oh, you, sir. I Mr. Wardell. What do you attribute the, the increase in, in calls in January? I mean, is there something, has the population increased that much that the, the calls would increase that much? It has. Uh, if you look down at the growth that we've seen at the beach, we've seen several one-story hotels become uh -huh. multi-story buildings that are uh, certainly a call for service. We see more in the fire prevention while they're under construction. Afterwards, there's, there's a greater call for service. Um, we, there's, there's certainly no uh, hiding the fact that New Hampshire sees its share of heroin, and uh, Hampton's not immune to that. We've seen a rise for calls uh, re related to drug overdose as well. Um, just in general, this is a this is a busier place. It really is. Whether it's commercially or or residentially, we see a, an uptick in volume uh, based on population rise. Okay. So, yeah. and with the, with the with the increase in, in drugs and stuff and stuff like that, I mean, you guys coordinate pretty well with the police and stuff. On Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that the, you know, between firefighters and police, the relationship is tremendous. Um, certainly between the, you know, the, the chief of the department and, and our offices, we're, we're weekly conferences. We go out and talk about their department, our department, make sure that we're all working well. Um, we feel that we've got this one really, you know, I know that Chief Sawyer is coming and I don't want to speak on his behalf, but I know that he's discussed his uh, version of what to do in a situation like that. And he trusts us to get there at the, at the forefront. Um, when we're going out for a call of, of that nature and we take care of business. We know how to do that. So. And, and from the state's point of view, I mean, I know it was kind of a disaster with the first drug czar. It didn't kind of work. Has there been more coordination on the state level? Uh, you know, we, we were actually um, very lucky to see Senator Shaheen come and visit. And I know that between Senator Shaheen and, and Senator Ayotte, they've um, procured funding for uh, Narcan, the administration for distribution of education and things like that and we've certainly seen an uptick in that um, we're working with through the state protocols and they're enhancing that as well so the medical director directors for the state are working on increasing the scope for for drug abuse good, good. and because we did change the fees and everything do a lot better on the income on that aren't we we are and I can tell you that as of my leaving this afternoon uh, Mrs. Welch told me that for the month of January, up to today, so including including uh, February 1st, we're at $3,950. And this time last year, we were at $475. All right, great. So yeah, that was it's also coming with an increased call volume. Yeah. They're, they're, they're doing a lot of work in that office, I can tell you. That's good. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you for your report. One, one yes, Mrs. Time. Wolseley, when I finish talking, yes. okay? Yes. Thank you. Just. I appreciate your report. It was really very informative. And I like the idea about um, adopting the hydrant also. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Wolseley. Yeah, just really quickly, gentlemen, Mr. Waddell touched on it. With the building boom that is now taking place, mm. particularly on the west side of town, there was discussion at the uh, review committee that, that I sat on for the development of the Montrone property. And it, the developers were discussing the possibility of having a fire and police substation on that property over there. And that development, while people think it's very nice and it will add to the tax rate, is going to add to your burden tremendously once that whole area that's owned by Mr. Montrone is developed. So this is a mixed blessing with all the building that's going on. So it's not just at the beach and you're going to be going even with Cornerstone, which is being approved. Okay, thank you. Very, um, very moving tough. on to waiver from purchasing policy. Good. Right. So I come before you this evening <coughs> because we have a great deal of uh, activity in the purchasing at Hampton Fire as a result of the direction from the town. Um, we had submitted uh, for review and your consideration warrant articles, which were then funded by using uh, purchase orders. So 
to that end, and I do believe that everybody uh, from Mr. Welch has received a copy of the letter that I had administered. So um, basically, we have had an opportunity to review all of the purchases that were to be warrant articles, and um, we've done our due diligence moving forward. There's one exception that we're going to uh, change and go out to bid. That's why I didn't put it on the list. But I can certainly read through it and tell you what I plan on doing and get your concurrence with each. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Thank you. Yes, absolutely. So with the encumbered funds from 2015, we're looking to purchase an SCBA filling station. I spoke yes. to you about how old Oz is. It was bought in 1987 and not by our dollars. Um, we had sought proposals from corporations that were out there. We received two. One was under $50,000, one was over $50,000. Um, we're seeking to get your concurrence to purchase the lower priced um, model. This is a vendor that we know, and it's also somebody that does service on our current airbags. I feel very comfortable in that. Uh, the product is one of the top rated products out there and we'll be receiving a Revolve Air uh, SCBA filling station. So I seek your concurrence on making that purchase. The total cost on that I do believe is about $48,000. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do oh, oh, you want to do each uh, one individually? No. Uh, your call. Probably would be better to okay. do each one individually. Set on that one. Oh, I'm fine. As long Sorry. as we're not going with the lowest vendor because they're the lowest vendor. Uh, and what's going to happen with the old filling station? I haven't determined that yet. I'm not sure that it's, uh, we, we've been told that it's, it's uh, the electronics on it are no longer serviceable. Okay. So if something goes on it, they can't fix it. The component parts, as far as compressor goes, may still have value, but the electronics and the housing certainly do not. So we I'm not sure what we'll do. We're going to have just hanging around. No, no. We have a nice new one and we'll do something with the old one. Absolutely. <clears throat> Mr. Great. Bean. Nothing, sir. Thank Good. you. Good. So I'll make a motion. make a motion that we... Uh, um, wave. Wave our wa our purchasing policy, policy yeah. and and go with the, the uh, bid that you have. Yeah. <laughs> I said. Oh, purchase policy. We have a first. We have a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Very good. Thank you. Second is the radio system. Our radio system, as I had discussed earlier, we have uh, old um, Alexander Graham Bell. Uh, circuitry, <laughs> two wire circuits connecting the voter sites, which are positioned strategically around the town. We're seeking to use FDDA circuits, which are four wire balance systems. Yeah. Um, Fairpoint Communications is a sole source provider for doing the circuitry, so we are looking to make them the uh, the um, contractor for this. Money? Uh, Nine thousand dollars in total. Mr. Waddell. And this is state of the art now. We'll this be right no, it's a lot better than, it's a lot better than it was. So okay. this is, b before we can get to state of the art, we need to repair the problem that we have now. We have portable radios and we have mobile radios in the trucks. Yeah. Uh, if we're at the beach or if we're at a, an area where we're far enough away from a voter, the machine can't, the what's called the voter, that's the actual voter, it can't decipher the signal, there's too much noise. Yeah. So it can't give us a good reception. And so therefore we're losing signals. And that means transmissions are being lost. What we're gonna do now is strengthen that um, we have actually sought out an idea for um, raising the bar and getting our radios up to state-of-the-art. Uh, uh, it's considerable cost, and before we even examine that, we're going to look for grants. Good. So. If you can, just what, what is state-of-the-art right now? Uh, for installation of part of the components, it's 50000 and for the additional components, was another 50000 right? Mm -hmm. uh, which also calls for a transfer of the repeater from the water tower to uh, fire alarm so that the fire alarm operators are uh, actually able to look at it. We've had a failure in the fire in the um, Falcon Circle water tower and <laughs> it went unnoticed. Basically the FDDA circuits would, would help us with that, but the old analog circuits, we didn't notice that it would, had gone down and nobody knew about it. The fire alarm operators would be able to look at the machine and say, okay, I have a dead circuit here and be able to identify it um, if we're able to move that. But that's, that's future. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All set. Mrs. Wolseley. Being dragged into the 21st century. Correct. Kicking and screaming. Mr. Bean. Nothing, sir. Sounds like you've done a lot of research on that, and we appreciate it. I'll second you, Rusty. I'll make the motion to waive the. Because All those in favor, source. unanimous. It's good when you can say, you know, sometimes it's not time for state of the art. No, and you know, the state of the art, it, it's changing so quickly. Yeah. Right now, state of the art also includes voice over IP. There's so many components to digital that are being explored that we just can't keep up with that right now. 
Um, what we need to do is fix the problem that we have at hand. Meat and potatoes. That's right. Good. Uh, and to that end, number three is the radio system as well. Once we get the FDDA circuits involved, we also have to connect them to the radio. Yeah. So two-way communications provides the connectivity for the FDDA circuits. So they're incorporated in that overall $9,000, but their connectivity is what we seek as a sole service vendor. Mr. Waddell. I'm set. Mr. Bridal. All set. Mrs. Wolseley. I'll second Rusty. Mm -hmm. Ms. Bean. We have I'll a first. Motion. We yep. have a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Great. Fire turnout gear. Uh -huh. As I had stated to you in a, a previous meeting, I was looking to begin a program of program replacement yep. for fire turnout gear. In 2009, we purchased 33 sets of gear for a total of about $64,000. Don't quote me on the numbers. Um, currently, to replace 33 sets of gear, <coughs> we would be at a little bit over $124,000 today's gear. This is, the gear is uh, slated to, to go 10 years, and then it has to be replaced. It's, it's mandated that it gets replaced after 10 years. And if you might imagine all the carcinogens that sit in the gear and all of the, the wear and tear, they don't last 10 years most of the time anyway. Um, currently, what I'm looking to do is purchase six sets, and we have gotten a price from Bergeron uh, Protective Equipment. They're the ones who supply us with our gear currently. Mm -hmm. They are the sole source provider for Globe, which is what we wear. Good. And the total for six sets purchased new was $18,000, 17 and change. Not bad. I just want to say to uh, anyone that's out there listening that we've done a lot of research on these purchases. Absolutely. And we've discussed them thoroughly. <coughs> and you sound pretty good. You've got it down pat. Uh, you've can tell you've really worked hard. Mr. Waddell? This is going to be a program that you're setting up where you re Yes, sir. So uh, as it stands, I've set before you for budget. I've set before you for warrant articles. The budget line item has four sets of gear per year. Um, it's, it happens where you're on a car wreck and uh, you'll be using um, Jaws of Life, right, the hydraulic cutting tools. Something happens, you'll tear the gear. Uh, we've had Lieutenant Gannon went into the DPW barn and was putting out a fire in the DPW barn, was covered in gray paint and it didn't come out. So new pants are required. Well, in that four sets of gear, we're trying to repair, replace, and <coughs> do whatever we have to for the current year. What we're doing with this sec six sets of gear is starting out a program replacement so that at, in 2019 we don't see a one lump sum that we have to get. So next year, I'm not looking for six. I'd like to bring it down to four and then see if we can't move forward. We'll get to a place where it's a very comfortable number in 2019. That's good. Mr. Bridal. All set. Mrs. Wolseley. I'll second Rusty. Mr. Bean. Negative. We have I'll a first the and a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Wonderful. Thank you. And against Mrs. Woolsey's finer judgment, um, I have departmental fire training, live fire training, right, Mrs. <laughs> Woolsey? Um, we but not have with the police department. Not with the police department, <laughs> no guns allowed. Um, the Guilford Training Facility, which is in Guilford, New Hampshire, has a, uh, has a burn building that is able to be trained in where we have live fire. We call it live fire. We burn pallets and hay um, and straw, and there are fires built for firefighters to go in and attack. They move as a team, they work as a team like they would in any normal structure. They're able to experience heat and smoke, they're on air, they're, they're moving as a team to do rescues. So we have never, in my history, and I don't know how long it's been since you've had it, but it's at least since before 2007, I'm going to be able to send each group as a group to train and do a day of at the Guilford fire, um, fire site. And in doing so, we have new people, who, you just met some of them tonight, They'll be going through and being conditioned as new firefighters under fire conditions. So um, the total cost on that was just a little bit over $17,000. And that is going to uh, take place as soon as you say yes. We're going to move two groups in the spring and two groups in the fall. Mr. Waddell? And absolutely crucial that people get live training, right? I mean, this is, uh, this is equivalent to the police um, qualifications for mm -hmm. firearms, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Because, you know, you can train in a back parking lot and squirt water at a cone all day, but it doesn't do the same as if you're crawling around in a smoky condition where you have to be on air. Uh, that's a condition that can't be repeated uh, otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. The other nice part about this, too, is you're going, you're sending each group up together. Oh. The guys that work together as a group are going together, so that's very important, too so they can learn to work with each other. Absolutely. So, so, no problem. Mrs. Wolseley. Were you looking for volunteers when you came in for one of us to stand in the You want to be the rescue? <laughs> sure. Would you be rescued? I'll second Rusty. Mr. Bean. I think so. All those in favor, unanimous. Yep. 
Very good. Um, number six, uh, replace the command vehicles. As I described to you, I believe it was in October that I, that I visited with you about the Warren articles, and I had, um, I had flecks of paint. We had pictures where the deputy scar, you can actually put this whole water bottle in his rocker panel. Mrs. Wolsey, I thought you saw me stick my fingers in the you side of mine as well. It's rusted through. Um, they've gotten worse uh, this morning. The deputy couldn't get into his rear hatchback because it was locked. And I now I have no handle on my rear door as it just broke off. So they're definitely getting older. Um, they're, our goal is to replace both command vehicles with new vehicles. We're going to use the Chevy Tahoe. We went and selected off the town bid, which I do believe you have a town bid list. I'm sorry, state bid. And um, McMulkin Chevrolet was the lowest of the state bid list for the Chevy Tahoe. We have a total of $90,000, which will purchase the vehicles, outfit it with lights and safety equipment, and also uh, radios, all new radios. So that's that. Mr. Waddell. Necessary. Mr. Bridal. They need to be done. Mrs. Wolseley. Delivery date? Well, uh, after 12 weeks. Yeah, 12 weeks on that. Maybe. That's all right. I don't want to have a new car in the winter anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mr. Bean. Now these, uh, just wait one second. Now, these vehicles will be able to be driven through the car wash, not, I mean, a car wash. Right. Right. And what about the paint job on them? You mentioned the lights and so forth. Lights are going to be uh, subdued. They're going to be similar to if no, you saw I mean, Deputy Hobbs' lights. You have enough money in here for the Correct. paint? Correct. Yeah. No, that's all encumbered. The whole thing? Correct. Okay. I'll second Rusty. Mr. Bean. Nothing, sir. All those in favor, unanimous. Very good. Uh, number seven is the radio installation for the command vehicles. Two-way communications, we're looking for them to be sole source. And uh, that's, they're still encumbered in the same amount of money. It's just that they're the ones who do the work for radios in this location. Good. Um, and the separate one for Adamson, or do you want to vote on that one, the Chair? It's up to you. The what? There, there are two more, seven and eight, the radio installation and the emergency light. They're all part of the same package. Okay, we'll, we'll do them all together. Okay, so the emergency light and safety package. Um, Adamson, which is out of Haverhill, if I'm not mistaken, right. Right? Adamson is in Haverhill, and they already bid on the process for the police department this year. Uh, Deputy Hobbs' car was outfitted through Adamson, so it's already the, the lowest bid there as far as that's gone. And we also know their work. Um, they've come in with a quote in the price. They're sole source for us on this as well, and we seek your concurrence with that. So moved. Second. All those in favor, it's unanimous. Let's go one more. Tough night, gentlemen. No, I think that's it. I'm not done, though. No. Oh. no, no, no. He's got the ambulance. You, uh, oh, okay. That's all right. Okay, I should have one, two, three, can do four, it. five, six, okay. So now, oh, everything that you've already read aside, there's a change in, in the way we were doing business. We talked to um, the town manager, and I had informed him that I didn't feel comfortable going ahead and purchasing a new ambulance until we had $500,000, and I thought he felt the same, and he concurred vehemently. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, I'm sorry, he, he was enthusiastic about concurring with that, okay. and we waited until we saw our $500,000 in the EMS fund. Uh, I'm coming before you because in December we were given guidance to go ahead and, and put a spec together and then put out to bid a new ambulance. We need to replace a 2006 Ford Ultramed that <coughs> was programmed to be replaced four years ago. Yeah. It's got 124,000 yeah. miles on it and change. It's costing us an inordinate amount of money for maintenance and it's down more than it's uh, ready for use at this time. Um, we had put out to bid, and we received only one bid in the process. So the last two ambulances, last two, have been road rescue. Last four, five. Four, five. Yeah, we've, we've had a lot of road rescue come through. Um, in conversation, we found out that a lot of bidders won't bid because they know that we're road rescue type people. Uh, additionally, we did call out there to ask why we only had one bid. And one woman told us that it was because it was holidays. I wasn't going to take the time to do it. So we essentially got one bid. They did meet the criteria. We reviewed it. Uh, after receiving only one bid, the deputy opened it up. And he had done all the work on this. Deputy Kennedy has really been at the forefront along with Firefighter Michael Woods um, and making the spec what we needed. And in doing so, they highlighted some changes that didn't need to be there. Uh, we found some areas that we would repurpose items that are already in the existing ambulance, uh, IV warmers that sort of thing. So we're moving it from the existing ambulance. It's a piece of equipment that's not broken. We'll take that. We won't buy new. Um, we reduced the price. The bid came in at $235,000. We've reduced the price to $208,000, and you negotiated that further down today. Um, what we're looking at right now, that is the standard. I've asked several fire chiefs local. 
that is about average for ambulances in the area and um, it's a product that we know however we only did receive one bid so I come to you seeking your concurrence to allow us to purchase on this this will not affect the tax levy I cannot state that loudly and firmly enough um, with mr. Wilcher's guidance here we have really gotten the ambulance account back to where it needs to be and I feel very comfortable in asking for uh, the purchase of this ambulance at this time through that <coughs> mr. Wardell and why wasn't it that people wouldn't bid I don't uh, there were several that that realized that you know that's not the product that they that they would like we we require a couple of things not the least of which is an all aluminum construction uh, bloodborne pathogens have a tendency to get stuck mm -hmm. in wooden compartments and things like that so we want aluminum we can clean it uh, s there are very few vendors that are able to to give that up so they don't bid uh, one woman actually told us that it was holidays I wasn't going to take the time to do it <laughs> so must be good. Business must be good. Yeah, I guess. Mr. Bridal. Well, you can make, bring a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. That's true. <laughs> and uh, if, if we only have one pe person that bid and it came in under what we were looking at, I'm fine with it. This is Chief, where is this coming from and what's the delivery date? Uh, well, the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Florida? Florida, right. Mm -hmm. 60 days. Uh, we were, because of the, the discussions that we had in yeah. early November mm -hmm. and uh, December, we started looking at all of our vendors. Um, the one that came to us, he said he would be able to do it. It's a product, that, it's a company we know, Minuteman. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who service oh, our engine okay. as well. Yeah. And um, they said 60 days. They told you that today, right? Is 60 days. Is it in Ocala? No, that's, that's, that's emergency, emergency one. one. Oh. Yeah. I'm not sure the exact city in Florida, but it's, it's close to there, though. You say Florida, you get the chairman excited. Um, <laughs> it's warm down there. <laughs> uh, I was at that. I went there when I, my sister was in Ocala, and I had an occasion to stop by there, and I was impressed with what they had. Oh, certainly. They do great work. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, with, with the, this purchase, we're going to be back into the every other year rotation on That's units the goal. one, two, and three? That's the goal. During the uh, the... I believe it was in May that we began the process, but a, a little bit after that, I know that the town planner had been working with the capital improvement plan, and we have selected to go forward in 2016, 2018, and 2020. Um, based on the previous purchase, we received an ambulance in 2014. Right. That began even before my arrival. I was, I was hired here in 2012, right. and the, the purchase of that one began before my arrival here. Uh, it took several years and several iterations, um, but that ambulance came in. If we project out, and I was looking at the cost of that, that was 174,000. This one's going to be 208. Okay. I'm very concerned about the cost of ambulances. I hope to keep replacing Mary two because this one's becoming inordinately um, a lot to spend on for maintenance, especially for an emergency vehicle. Mm. While we're on the subject, I want to thank you personally because the ambulance billings have been a concern to me and the uh, ambulance fund is supposed to be self-funding basically but uh, there are instances where we're not able to collect from some individuals who've been transported but uh, you really reassured me as to the manner in which the department is handling the emergency service billing and i think we're, we're on track to do the best job that can be done under the circumstances I so agree. i really appreciate that mr bean no cost Thank you very much for coming in tonight. I'll, I'll make the motion to waive the bid process yeah. and go with a single source as they, they were the only ones that bid. Yeah, I second Rusty. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Yeah. Thank you all. Thanks, we guys. appreciate it. Have a great night. Moving on, we have the Hampton School Board. you tomorrow night so uh we've already voted it for it yes i'm sorry i didn't i didn't quite catch how that through. Thank you. Thank you. Meetings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'll let you have the rest of the fun. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Chairman's just moving too fast. That's all. Okay. 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It was nice to hear the ambulance cost. I, Fred, didn't we? Isn't that ambulance normally four to five hundred thousand? Like. No. 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 Oh, no. 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 One seventy-five to two hundred. How much? One seventy-five to two hundred. Well, he was right in the ballpark. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good I thing we're here to talk about school issues and not the ambulance. <laughs> Hopefully no one will get to use it by the end of the evening. Oh, no, you know, um, never get to use it. <laughs> okay, Jim, go ahead. Thank you very much for uh, letting us come and meet with you this evening. We are very excited. It's an exciting time to be a, a resident in Hampton and also to be a school uh, child in Hampton, especially at Hampton Academy, with the new proposal and renovation project that we have proposed to the taxpayers. And we're here just to, we know that you were given a packet of information and just to clear up or, yes, just to clear up or answer any questions you may have. Uh, is there any questions that you have or that you would like us to answer for you or anything? Um, Mr. Waddell. You want to go to Rusty first. And no, I've... Uh I've heard the propo the uh, proposal many times. I've talked to the superintendent and the assistant superintendent many times, and I think they've they've worked very hard at this. I know I, when I was on the school board, we were working on it back then, mm -hmm. and I think it's a good proposal. So, thank you. No question. Mrs. Wolseley, uh, I'm very excited with the project, and this is work that is long overdue for the safety of the students and for the health. <laughs> Of, of everyone working in the building and also uh, just to make a better uh, more modern learning experience um, I it was mentioned to me that apparently you're going to sponsor another uh, tour another walkthrough at the yes. Academy on the 13th did I get that right uh, time of day Nine 9 a.m. because that's going to be a Saturday yes. okay and, and we want and I'm sure you'll be mentioning that tomorrow night Yes. as well. Um, I'm very proud of the work uh, that was done by the committee and the superintendent and the finance manager and the school board. Everybody pitched in, did a wonderful job. I thought the committee was a great cross-section. We are very fortunate and I am more than happy to support this uh, unstintingly. You might mention one more time the, the um, uh, payoff of the two <coughs> existing, of the balance of the two existing bonds. Yes. And the dollar amount that that will relieve us of once the new <coughs> bond goes into effect. Would you speak to that, Mr. Lovey? <laughs> we love to have Nathan Thank do you. that. Uh, Microphone, Nathan, why don't you go, grab that? Come there? Sure. Yes. Right. So the tax impact has been and should be reasonably the most important <laughs> to some folks as they consider a project like this. Uh, you speak to two bonds that are currently um, currently a part of the operating budget. Mm -hmm. We're paying roughly uh, roughly uh, $340,000 a year in uh, debt service against the Marston School Project, which will be paid off in August of 16, which is next year's budget, 1617. Right. Part of the proposed operating budget folks will be voting on this cycle. Mm -hmm. The other is about 100 and 105, 115,000, sorry, uh, against the Nicely Marston School against the Center School Project, the 99 edition, and, and that will that will um, uh, that will terminate with a final payment in August of 2018. It'll be part of the 1819 right. budget. Right. And so, as you look at the material that's before you, as folks consider the information that's been shared publicly uh, at the bond hearing, that which we'll be voting on uh, or uh, reviewing tomorrow night at the deliberative session and voting on in March, the financing of the proposed project is that the initial interest only payment of four hundred and sixty thousand dollars would be is is part of article number one on the on the school's uh, warrant that's about a seventeen cent per thousand of assessed value impact mm -hmm. that's seventeen cents of new dollars that are not already coming out of your pocket uh... on the average three hundred thirty thousand dollar home we've got that at uh... i'm not looking at a fifty fifty one or fifty one or two dollars a thousand uh... fifty one or two dollars uh, for the year uh, for the average $330,000 home. So is that for as an increase? That's, a, that's, that's new money. Yeah, that's so an increase in the taxes. Yep. Yeah. That's, uh, and so in the second year. But it year, would be going down to nothing after the next year. So, so yeah, so that, right. That goes away, that 460 of interest only, but the 460 will be in the budget now. And to that, we need to add $875,000 
which will be added to the 1718 budget. Mm -hmm. That'll cost you another 32 cents a thousand. Mm -hmm. Combined, that's about 49 cents of new money not already in your pocket. But what you just uh, spoke to a moment ago is that the Marston bond will be finished. Right. And so the roughly $340,000 being allocated for that in the operating yeah. budget will also be connected to the Hampton Academy project. That rounds out the total annual payment that has to be made. And so the total tax impact, if you wanted to consider not old money, new money impact, if you simply wanted to know what does it cost per thousand for the project, that's 61 cents a thousand. Yeah. But there's 17 cents of that's already baked into your budget now, paying for Marston and center school projects that we will roll into that debt service. So it's new money in the first year of 17 cents per thousand, new money beyond that in the second year of 32 cents per thousand, and that will be flat for the remainder of the 20 years. So in the process of retiring the debt on both Marston and Center Schools, the SAU-90 will have only the one bonded debt Meaning. for the Hampton Academy, 20-year bond. 20-year bond. 20-year bond. Part of and the timeliness of the conversation has been one that interest rates are still low, bonding is at about 3 and 3.15 uh, was the last bond sale. We've got another bond sale coming up this the end of this month. Uh, and we'll see what the municipal bond bank does there. And the maturing of those bonds made it additionally timely because those resources could be redirected to benefit this project. And you're right, moving forward, we'll have just the one bonding that remains. And by, t by 1819, by J August of 2018, the other two bonds will have been completed and retired and we'll only look at the Hampton right. Academy bonds as payment. And harking back, one more, uh, harking back to your uh, construction at Center School a couple of years ago, uh, you had given us a price for that and you actually ended up by coming in under budget, which you usually do, and you do a great job and I'm looking forward to this. I know you will not spend one more penny than you have to. Thank you. So, thank you. <coughs> Would you like to continue? Yes, and then we want to thank you for putting forth your part of the transfer of land, which we use now as a parking area, and we have also have it on our warrant article, so then it will become part of the Hampton Academy project. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for that, and we urge the voters uh, to remember to vote on that article. It, it is contingent, though, on it. It is contingent on the warrant right. article of the Academy passing. Right. And also, if we do not use it for school purposes, it reverts back to the top. Right. So those two things do right. happen. Right. Um, we also want to thank you for the support of the cable article. It is my understanding that article got increased at town meeting. Deliberative session. Deliberative yeah. session. Yeah. It's so, yeah. It got amended. Got amended. And uh, I'm okay with it. I mean, it, 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 both articles, the original one uh, that the Board of Selectmen came up with and the amended version, are, we're going to require a second step anyway <laughs> to get the percentages lined up. But we're, we're very excited. As you can see, Channel 13 is up and running and going with all different kinds of programs, and we thank the Selectmen for help, all the work and Tom, Tom Manager Welch for all the work that, and the cable company for all the work that they all did get channel 13 up and running but thank you i'm now thinking Mr. Yeah, i wasn't thinking when you hit me the first time okay. yeah yes <laughs> i'm in full support of this and i've seen the i've seen the presentation a number of times and i made a comment to somebody that was about approximately my age not a very old guy you know but yep. uh, and i said if you were if he had not been in the school i said if you were in that school it looks exactly like when we went to school absolutely it doesn't need to be it needs to be upgraded so I'm definitely in support of this, and uh, I think it's a great project, and you guys have done, done a great job. And if anyone out there would like to take a tour of Hampton Academy, please call either Dave O'Connor at 926-2000 or Kathleen Murphy or Nathan Lunny at 926-4560, and they will arrange for you to get a tour to see what's going on and also to see the proposed article. The fifth thing that we wanted to talk to you about is we had some recommendations. We had a Safe Routes to School Committee, and they had um, an executive summary which came in with some ideas on how to improve mm -hmm. the Winnicunit cross crossing area, the Hampton Academy crossing area, no roads, no. No roads. and we thought that by working together with the town, that maybe because it's like, as we all said, the school owns the schools, but it does not own the sidewalks and the roads. That's comes not, under not the yet, Board Jenny. of Selectmen. Not yet. 
on the Board of Selectmen. So we'd like to work together with you um, while we have all the action going, excuse me, Jane, mm -hmm. all, action going there, we maybe could combine forces or figure out a way to get at least a couple of the projects yeah, done. We, we know you have your priority list, and right. that's okay. And right. we, at the end of the year, we do have some fund balances at times. Mm -hmm. and we also have some grants available. If we work together, if the two boards work together and amalgamate a little bit, we could get some of these top five, these top five recommendations here accomplished. Um, and so that's, that's our message. Right? right, that's our message. It's, we'd love to work together to get some of these safe routes done. Yeah. And hopefully you will all like to work together with us too. Questions, Mr. Waddell? I, I agree 100%. I think it, Hampton is the most pedestrian, unfriendly town, and the routes to school are the most unfriendly routes to school. And I think it's, it's hor horrendous that kids can't walk to school safely, can't cross intersections safely. So, so yeah, I, I think working together to get that yeah. solved is absolute must. Well, we've been investigating some of these uh, crosswalk lights, yep. the solar-powered uh, wireless uh, fairly reasonable to put in and and maybe we can get with our public works director and, and see about maybe seeing where some of the locations you guys might like to have it and, yep. and maybe you guys can put some grant money to help yeah. offset the cost of those and we can work together and get them put in. Sounds like a plan. All right, thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, you did a fairly comprehensive uh, showing of this I believe last year. I remember seeing quite an extensive uh, uh, um, description of what you have in mind I there's certainly no reason at all why we can't work together and see what we can do to improve yeah, I mean it, it, it they got the top five right here right in front yeah. of us. so yep. We'll yep. zero in on that and see if we can amalgamate a little bit Excellent. put some skin in the game in terms of dollars and uh, get on with it. and you'll Mr. be Bean. you'll be working on Academy Avenue a little bit too with this new project yes. So yes. that, in and of itself, with your new parking area and cool. so forth, should help you. Yeah. Mr. Bean. Yes, thank you. Uh, Director uh, Nathan, uh, board members, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Welch, I, I think this uh, is, a, is a real high note in cooperation between um, the select board and your board, the superintendent, and our chief executive, Mr. Welch, uh, from uh, the warrant that was uh, produced with uh, um, town Council's effort on both sides to uh, um, further your project. Uh, you've kept the board, the town informed magnificently. It's a wonderful project. Um, there's a couple of board members that have graduated from that, uh, that uh, academy, the academy, not <coughs> Phillips or Exeter, but the <laughs> academy. And uh, it's a great school. Our children have gone there. Our grandchildren will probably go there. And it's a great project, and it should be fully supported by uh, the community. And congratulations on your success. Thank you. And I think that concludes, unless you have any other questions. <coughs> One more. Okay, we'll have a follow-up. Mr. Waddell. I'm set. Mr. Bridal. I'm all set. Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, really quickly. Uh, within the past week or so, um, Superintendent Murphy and uh, Principal O'Connor and so forth have been starting to communicate with the youngsters at uh, yeah, at Marston School, who will be fed in, the fifth grade class will be fed into the academy next year. And I'm wondering if at some point in time you might have a presentation so the public can hear that, the uh, parents, and my, if you have a presentation that we could run on Channel 22 as well, that might be a sensible idea so that the community can get an idea of what's happening because there will be about a two and a half year transition talking about the phase in. with the, the phase construction, in. right. That's, and yeah. I thought it was very, very good and very good for the children to start being reassured, but there will be some uh, disruption yep. uh, in the course of the renovation. And I think it would be great if we could, if we can telecast that on 22 as we well can. as on 13, if you guys are going to have um, the superintendent and the principal and so forth make that presentation. We had um, one last uh, Thursday night and I mean last Tuesday night and Friday morning for the it. parents of the incoming right. fifth graders right. and then we sixth graders and then we also had a meeting with all the fifth grade students to mm -hmm. talk about what they were going to go mm -hmm. through. But well, I think we've also got yeah. some more other scheduled. I think Mary, we yeah. have any more scheduled Kathleen for the parents. Oh, fifth graders? Yes. No. No. 
Okay, but we could certainly look into Jonathan one of the general public. put something on film for you, yep. possibly, because I think it would be good for the community to see. I know Mr. O'Connor was talking about the possibility of, uh, say, walking, if the, when the weather's decent, walking the youngsters from Marston to the junior high in the afternoon and all that, and uh, we might be able to, because the so community will see that, too. So on their agenda for next Tuesday night is this issue, because that was of great concern to the parents about right. the displacement of students, where their kids would be, how that would work, would they miss out on Hampton Academy Microphone schedule, Kathleen. thank you. Yes. And so um, the board obviously makes the decisions about placement of students when it comes to major changes like that. So right. they will be addressing that issue on Tuesday night at right. the school board meeting. Um, Mr. O'Connor and I will make recommendations based on all the input that we've gathered, and then um, leave the decision making in their able hands uh, as to what will happen with uh, fifth graders. But we think that we found a really good compromise. Good. Uh, parents seem to um, mm -hmm. embrace the idea, and the st and honestly, the kids were great. Uh, they had two concerns: would they still have ice cream like they do at <laughs> Hampton Academy? Yeah. But um, <laughs> yes, but they, um, they always <laughs> speak. You know, middle school kids speak with their bellies, right? Um, but um, they also had uh, lots of excellent questions around what their middle school experience would be, um, and with all the components that comes with a middle school. Uh, and so it was a great, uh, a great discussion with yeah. the kids. And, and, and again, the parents seemed o okay with our plan. And a real community effort. And, uh, and personally, as just one resident of Hampton, I thank all of you because it's been an outstanding, outstanding job. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Yes, sir. All set. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank I'm sure you. that you're going to be wanting to get to bed early tonight. Uh, oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Bridal used yeah. to sit at, at budget meetings with me in the, in the library of the Hampton Academy when the snow came through the windows. Absolutely. Till 1 and 2 in the morning we did. <laughs> Moving on to approval of minutes for January 25th, 2016. I'll make a motion we approve the minutes. I'll second. It's already signed. It's signed. Let's get a note on it. Oh, right there. On the top one. Favor. Aye. No, they did. I did them all wrong. Don't worry. I'll make the motion we accept the minutes as presented. Second. Um, minutes. Yes. All those in favor? Hey. Mrs. Walsley, you can just take care of those for yourself. Oh, okay. Please. All right. Moving on to the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. <clears throat> Property owners within the Hampton Beach precinct who wish to avail themselves of the reduced tax rate should come to the assessor's office to complete the necessary forms by April 15th. After that date, there's no, more, there's no further submission for that reduction. The filing period for those who would like to apply for exemptions against their tax bill for the town must come to the assessor's office to obtain the necessary forms to complete the process for elderly veterans and other exemptions and file the completed forms by March 1, 2016. So time is coming. It's very close. Mr. Chairman, on Friday we had a, 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 a sale auction of the property that we had taken at 27 Pearl Street, and I'm very happy to tell you that uh, uh, we had uh, sold the property for $215,000, which is substantially more than uh, what was due in taxes, interest costs, and expenses. Good. So we'll be um, finalizing that material up, and I do have for you tonight uh, the deed to sign so that as we go through this process, we can, in fact, finish that process. Uh, for those who are very excited about elections, we have the primary elections coming on Tuesday, February 9th, and uh, since we have such a short ballot, it seems like everybody in God's creation is on this <laughs> ballot so long, uh, we hope that a lot of folks will show up so that they, it'll be whittled down to some place that's something that's more reasonable and easier to, to handle. Um, Mr. Chairman, we, I, I had informed the board last week that we have been asked to be and are the host community for the USS Hampton's arrival sometime in the spring. Uh, my suggestion to the board is that they appoint a committee 
to work on this process and to organize the uh, the host committee's duties and, and responsibilities and and uh, with that I would uh, hope the board would ask for volunteers from the general public and I'm, I'm sure they'll be forthcoming without much difficulty so um, when do we need to have that for I would suggest that we do that within the next uh, couple of weeks that we appoint a committee uh, in order to start this process so that we will have it well in gear before the USS Hampton arrives. <clears throat> we don't know when it will arrive. It will be in the spring. They'll give us 24 hours notice that the, the sub <laughs> is going to be coming into Portsmouth. Um, all the logistics that are involved in moving uh, uh, special military equipment apply here. So uh, it's very short notice. But they will call us and tell us it's coming on the day it's to arrive, so or the day before. So that uh, whatever the committee wishes, they can go down that day and welcome the sub or do whatever has is, is been prepared. Um, you know, there's the quick claim deed that we need to have signed. Um, we've been, and I'm going to put this on the agenda for next week because obviously we have a um, some lengthy thought to go through about this, and I am meeting with Public Works on it tomorrow and you know Wednesday. Um, We've been having some problems with recycling carts and condominiums. And um, yes. we have people who are acquiring them because they've moved from a house to a condo. Yeah. They bring the carts from the house. And uh, we're running into some problems because once they put them out, we feel obligated to pick them up. Yeah. But now that we're picking up the recycling carts on the side of the road, in this particular case, on Ocean, Ocean Boulevard, they now want recycling carts for every apartment. Yeah. And, uh, uh, they're talking about whether or not they should actually have uh, trash carts for all the, all the waste yeah. additionally. Uh, and we're running into, into a logistical problem. I'm going to ask the Public Works Director to come and talk to you about it. Uh, because of the number of stops that we'd have to increase to accommodate the people who want to be accommodated, um, we may, may not be able to complete the collection of the houses in a week. And that's starting to bother us because this situation is mounting again and more difficult. So. But as I say, I'm going to put the Public Works Director on and um, see if we can't uh, come to some reasonable conclusion to do this particular, take care of this particular subject. And that's it, sir. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you would need a motion to sign the deed, Mr. Chairman. I'll make a motion we sign the deed for the property at 27 Pearl Street. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. One thing I wanted to ask now, sure. it would be, uh, what, two weeks from now is February 15th? Yes. Yeah. So if we could um, have anyone out there that might want to be on this committee for the uh, SS Hampton, do you think two weeks is enough to get some? I'm just thinking in February 3rd is a holiday. Yeah, February 15th is a holiday. Uh, but cer the next week. certainly in the next two weeks that they could send us information in, we'll accumulate it get to the board as quickly as possible. May, so may we I would like a, to... May I make a suggestion? Why? So if it doesn't get everybody too excited. Why don't we contact the gentlemen who were part of the old reception committee. There's still a number of them around. There are a few. And at least a quick note to them, or yeah. memo, or email, or something. I That's would start there. That's why I'm looking there. for suggestions from the board as to what you would like to okay. do. Well, so you're saying that we need to have this information within the next two weeks? Yeah. I would think we need to start formulating in the relatively okay. near future, because spring is coming quite soon. Right. Well, I think anyone out there that might want to bring their name forward then over the next two weeks, we're going to take a look at what type of response we get, and then we can see what we have to do. And I'll let the former committee know that this is in progress. Okay, can we put great. on channel 22? Yes, also? sir. We will. Be good. Yeah. Questions for the town manager, Mr. <clears throat> Waddell? Not a question, but a comment. Uh, sir. For people to, the town manager mentioned the primary coming up next week. Go on the town website and look at the sample ballot. Ah, that's a good idea. There are 58 names. Oh, yeah. There's not just three Democrats running. There are not just 16 Democrats, uh, Republicans. There are 58 names. Oh, so it could be kind of overwhelming when you go in. So go on the town website, look at the sample ballot, and then you'll be all set when you vote. No, you won't. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
You'll have reader's cramp by the time you finish reading the ballot. Okay. Mr. Bridal. I did go to the auction the other day. It was, it was very surprising to see how many people were there and interest in that piece of property. Uh, I was very surprised at the price we got for that piece of property. Uh, in talking to uh, Jim St. Jean, the auctioneer, um, he was telling me about one he was doing on Monday, today, over in Derry. He had 38 pieces of property that Derry was disposing of. Wow. That's, this is the last of the ones they were doing. They had 100, <laughs> over 100 that they had to dispose of. Yeah. So. We ought to feel very fortunate in this town that we don't have that problem. So, I might might add to that that uh, uh, the auction went very smoothly. There were no problems. Uh, the property went very quickly. Uh, I was kind of amazed. We had more people there than we had at the deliberative session. Yes, we did. Huh. Well, that's not a surprise, I guess. Good heavens. Well, it should be. Yeah. Oh. So. Uh, I'm all set. Thank okay, you. Mrs. Wolsey. I have nothing for the manager here. I'll do under uh, new old business. Mr. Bean. Oh, <clears throat> thank you for your report. Thank you, sir. Moving on to old business, Mr. Waddell. Uh, no, except uh, are we going to? Uh, We're going to pick ab about the uh, election. election. No. I'll are we going to uh, re-vote on, on the, our, our recommendations for the Warren Articles that were amended, or are we going to just... We have do the right we, to do that, right? We, we should. We'd have to amend the Warren again. Oh, we would? Yeah, I don't... We've oh, already we signed it. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, so, but why don't we do uh, talk about the election? No. Um, oh, we have to have people there. Yeah. So, are you, do you want to volunteer when it would be best for you, or let when, us? When's good for you, Thank you sir? Thank you. Uh, we could do it the same as we did the last one. I'll go in the first part of the morning. You'll have rotary, right? Yeah, so, and then I'll come in. So I'll, I'll go in first thing. I'll be there at seven. Um, I'll stay till Jim gets there, uh, and a little after. I, so I, I can stay until early afternoon or, or later. Okay, so till two well, o'clock. You do guys will cover it till two o'clock. Two o'clock. I can okay. do two. Okay. Um, You'll do. What? Day? Oh, that's Tuesday. Yep. Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, I don't think there are any night meetings that. Okay. okay, so you'll do two to four, right? Two to five. Two to five. Two to five. Okay, and that leaves uh, Mr. Bean. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just assign me. I will stay on my watch as you Okay, team why fit. don't you uh, come? Fine. I will come from fine. 5 on, and you arrive when we have to sign the ballot at night. Happy hour? In between happy yeah, hours. Happy hours. <laughs> <laughs> How does that sound? Lovely. Lovely. Okay, lovely. great. Thank you. So I'll be there at 5. Mrs. Wilson will be there 2 to 5, and you guys. We get the, the day I'll come back and sign. Yeah. Okay, great. And old business, Mr. Bridal. Nothing. Mrs. Wolseley? Yes. Um, first of all, at the deliberative session, uh, I all of the articles that needed a tax impact statement were so noted except for the um, bond. Why does Article 10 not have a fiscal impact? In conformance with the prior bond issues, it was determined at the time that since there is no outlay of cash in 2016, that there would be no there would be no impact in 2016. Otherwise, you'd have to list every single year from 2017 through the end of the bond, and you don't That's know how long the bond is what or what it's going to cost. The district is doing, I don't think. I think well, they're just showing the impact of the first year. I'm just uh, just a little bit concerned on that. If we go for a bond in this calendar year, won't we be liable for some interest or something on it? No, 2017. No interest. Oh, well, it just I wondered about it yeah. because it wasn't on there, so I thought I'd ask. I mean, um, there is a schedule that would have to come out. We, we talked to the Municipal Bond Bank, and they can't tell us what the interest is going to be. Because the bond bank is coming up pretty quick, isn't it? That's in June. Okay. So we got a, we got a period of time to wait in order to figure out exactly what the interest is going to be, assuming several things. One, well, it, passes, it passes, right. and assuming that the board and the town treasurer uh, come to an agreement on how to accept that bond and how to, how to uh, issue it. 
Okay. So there's a, there's a whole series of things that need to be done here before we can have any real financial resolution to that. Okay. That's that has the accuracy I think you want. Well, I thought I'd ask. I no, mean, no, that's it doesn't hurt to ask. No, no, never um, hurts to ask. <laughs> on the um, am I the IT Article 29? Um, I was surprised. Um, at uh, Nick Bridle's comments and, and Mr. Jones's comments because they brought out information that I was not aware of when we voted on that article. Um, I think we took care of the article as a deliberative session, but that's a little concerning if there's a, a subcommittee or a group of people who are investigating something. I think it would be nice if we got the results as well. But that was a budget committee, subcommittee, I think. Well, somebody has to give them to us. Yes. I mean, it would have helped. It's well, but we didn't have them. Yeah, I realized that. So I, I felt badly about that, but I guess we uh, took care of it. My big concern is Article 34, which is the franchise fees. And I've been doing a little research. Wasn't that amended at the deliberative session? Yes, I mean, it was. Why would you you made the motion. But my concern is this. Um, we discussed this. This is a board warrant article, if I recall. And my intent when we set this up, uh, because we have been running the, um, we've had the franchise fee since 2000? Somewhere around that time. Right. Yes. And uh, my concern is funding, as you know, because the piece of equipment broke, the recorder broke, and we were scrambling. We want to be able to fund the cable channels adequately for their equipment. Uh, that's adequately. I'm not looking to have a gold mine in there. Um, I was willing to go the 40 percent, which would take about 48,000, put about an additional 48,000 in the hopper for the cable committee to spend, which is a fairly decent amount of money. Because I was willing to take that step as one member of this board to start moving forward to see what we really need to accommodate the needs of the cable committee. To jump from 25% to 100% on something that is bringing in revenue of about, I think Fred said 328,000 in franchise fees, we'd be losing 246,000 of revenue for the, for the <coughs> taxpayers. I know everybody's talking about taxes and whatever, what is the original purpose of a franchise fee, Fred? The original purpose of a franchise fee is to be able to operate a community system of uh, TV for education, for town government, and for individuals who want to appear on an open channel. Right. Peg, so peg channels. Would you call it a tax? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. I have a point of parliamentary. Well, I have very little that can be done at this can point. Can there be anything done on this? No. No. So well, it was voted on in the deliberative session. The amendment was approved. It was yeah. passed. And so, I mean, Selectman Wolseley might have her own feelings, but that's fine. I don't think we have to sit here and listen to her. Well, I'm sorry that none of you want to sit here and listen to me, but maybe once in a while the public does. And what my well, the public point, could have had a chance to come to the deliberative. Excuse me. Is, I was no, saying no, something. I was Mr. Talking. Chairman, may I say something? No, yes. I was talking, and I was interrupted, and Mr. Wall. I had a parliamentary no, question. I'm gonna, she, he, I'm going to finish. He asked to. Uh, to I had a, a parliamentary, parliamentary inquiry. I'm procedure. right in the middle of my. Okay, remarks. well then let's take care of his. The, his he, he is right. There's nothing that can be done. Would you want to wrap I up would your like comments? To, thank you. May I do that? I appreciate it. My point is this: there is something that can be done, and that means to ask the public to vote no on this okay. article. Mrs. Because Wolseley, I'm not. It's just the point of order. Well, we, we are not. We are not, we are not here to. We're not going to go and, and uh, pick out Warren articles that we don't. You're do, You're campaigning. We is were very blindsided. Okay. I was. We will have a moment that we will motion. go, and this is not the moment we're going to discuss who we want to cherry pick the Warren articles and how I'm we want to vote for them. I'm not trying to cherry pick. I, okay. I mentioned at the, the night openly. before the election. When the time comes, we will get to weigh in on these things. This has been done by the voting 
the citizens of Hampton already, and you cannot change it. This is the Selectman's article of what I'm trying to it say. It cannot be changed now. What I'm trying to say I understand to you what you're trying to say, Mrs. Wolseley. There's Wolseley. going to be this a, has come to an end, Mrs. a significant loss Mrs. Wolseley, of revenue we understand to the that. taxpayers which will not be able okay, to be applied. Okay, Mrs. Wolseley, this is not your Why day to campaign to for everyone. I'm not campaigning Stop. for anyone. Stop, Mrs. Wolseley. I am talking Stop. about a situation. Stop. We, this is, conversation has come to an end. The, the, that is enough, Mrs. Wolseley. All right. Please, Enjoy. stop. You, we will have time, yes. and you will be able to comment at another time, but that's not, you're not going to just sit here and pick every warrant. It's already been taken care of. Stop. Well, it has Mr. not been Bean. taken care of. And there's a problem. Here. Uh, is there another subject we can address? Any other old business? No, sir. We're moving on to new business. Mr. Waddell. No, I'm set. Mr. Bridal. Thank you, I'm set. New business, Mrs. Wolseley. My goodness, I can't think of a single one. I'm sure you can't think. That's sometimes I'm obvious. All set, Mr. Chairman. You know, the Thank nice, you. The nice We've part about we have acceptance television. of health trust donation, five hundred dollars, recreation and parks. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, this is a, um, a health coordinated donation for the town uh, to encourage people to participate in the health trust healthy um, programs uh, and receive a reimbursement from the health trust for participating in those programs. Hmm. This is money that will be used to, uh, in fact, notify employees of what those programs are and, and be able to uh, recruit the employees to go and ho hopefully get healthy or get in better health. So the funds have been donated by the Health Trust for that purpose, and they're going to be administered by the Park and Recreation Department because they volunteered. I'll make a motion we accept the I'll second it. $500 donation. Any further discussion? All those in favor, unanimous. Moving on, other, anyone else have other new business now? I have whoop, new business. I just hate to disappoint you, but I'll be brief. The parade and public gathering license for half at the Hamptons was approved on a four to one vote uh, when we started, uh, shortly after we started the meeting. If we had had a chance to discuss this, I would have just made a suggestion to the board that I think when we're issuing these permits, we should hopefully be discussing the possibility of issuing them, allowing closure of only one half of the roads that these races are run on. So when we have one, you'll get to bring that up the next time. Well, Thank I you, know, Mrs. Wolseley. Well, I it's Wolseley. a little late for the march. Thank you. Yes. Closing comments. Mr. Waddell? Uh, just the public had a chance to speak at the deliberative session. Mr. Bridal. I would say in, in reference to uh, road races and marathons, we have an excellent police department, we have an excellent fire department, we have an excellent public works who all has input when we when they put those together and I think uh, we leave it in their trusted hands. Luckily there will be more people coming to vote when these articles are decided and then what was that, the deliberative session. Absolutely. <coughs> Any you have comments? no right to close off public roads and Mr. Bean. No, sir. <laughs> Thank you. We have a meeting tonight with the town attorney. Is it a non meeting? Is it a non meeting? Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. At what Please. time? We need a time. 2023. Is wrong. 2023. 2023. Yes. 2023. Thank you. The gentlemen have a